One of the best ways you can improve your efficiency in Photoshop is by using keyboard shortcuts. However, not everything you do may have a shortcut. In fact, I say that there are stick shift drivers and automatic drivers. If you prefer using the menu, you're more of an automatic driver. If you prefer using keyboard shortcuts, then you're a stick shift driver. And I can beat any automatic driver out of the gate because shortcuts ultimately will make you faster. Let's take a look at how we can customize Photoshop shortcuts and also see a list of all shortcuts built into Photoshop. If you don't know a way to do something faster and you like a reference, Photoshop has that built in for you. Under the Edit menu, at the very bottom, is Keyboard Shortcuts. When you choose Edit Keyboard Shortcuts, on the right you can hit Summarize to export an HTML version of all the shortcuts that exist in Photoshop. I'll click Summarize once, and I'll save it to my desktop. And when you hit Save, Photoshop will launch your default web browser and open up that shortcut list. So let's search this list for a common shortcut, and maybe I don't remember it all the time, so I constantly have to go look it up. I can do Edit Find, and when I do Find, I'll type in Letting. And here you see top to top letting, bottom to bottom letting. I'll keep searching and see if there are any more. So that shortcut isn't in the list. Let's look for another one, image size. There we are. Image size on the Mac is Command Option I. If you were looking at this on Windows, it would say Control Alt I. So check this out for your most frequently used features to see if it provides a list. I'll close my browser window and come back to Photoshop. There are a few tools and a few features that don't have shortcuts, or a shortcut that I used to use years ago that was stolen for a brand new tool. So I'm going to show you how to reassign them. Here you have the Photoshop factory settings, or out-of-the-box defaults. Over on the right, I can create a new set starting with the defaults and customized for me. I'll click that button, and I'll name this Kelly, and it saves it as a keyboard shortcut file. You don't want to change the location where it's saving. It defaults to the proper place. When I hit Save, one of the shortcuts I like to steal back is the Blur shortcut. So if I click on Application Menus, I can go to Tools. And in Tools, these occur in the order that they appear in the toolbar. I'll scroll down, and I'm looking for the Blur tool. There we go. When I locate the Blur tool, I click once, and years ago it was a letter R for Blur, <laughs> and that's how I remembered it. In CS4, they added the Rotate View command. I like that tool, but rarely use the shortcut to jump to it. Blur is something I do daily to soften pores or smooth out details. So I'm going to accept the new R for Blur tool and go to the Conflict. And if I'd like to give Rotate View Tool a new shortcut, I can. But typically, I'll just hold down on the Hand Tool and slide to Rotate View when I need to use it. The next thing I'm going to assign is something that you couldn't do, I think, until Photoshop CS5. Again, on the Tools, I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom, and you can make a keyboard shortcut for the Foreground Color Picker or the Background Color Picker. So one letter will bring up the Color Picker dialog. Now when you assign this, you should choose a letter that isn't reserved for anything else. So if I try to do C for Color, C is already used for Crop, and I use that almost daily. So I wouldn't want to steal that one. I could try K. Oh, and it looks like K isn't taken for anything. K to Pick, if I remember Picker, will work. So now I hit OK. And let's say I wanted to do a border along the bottom of this. I could make a marquee selection. I could do Layer, New Layer, and name it Border. And finally, 
I can hit the letter K for the color picker, and I could choose a color for that bottom border. Click OK and choose Edit Fill with Foreground Color and hit OK again. I could have also used a shortcut. You'll notice most of the shortcuts are shown to you directly in the menus. Not all are there. So if there's a filter that you use on a regular basis that you'd like to assign a keyboard shortcut to, or if there's a tool that used to use a shortcut that you'd like to bring back, go into Edit, Keyboard Shortcuts, and assign away. Just be cautious to not remove very common shortcuts in case you share machines with someone. So now, on your own, jump into the Keyboard Shortcuts dialog, assign quick keys to panels, tools, or menu items that you use most.